brought to you by the Cool Fat Burner, the world's first brown fat weight loss device. Hey everyone, it's Eric. Uh, we're going to get some blood work done before and after using the Cool Fat Burner. See about some possible uh, hormonal responses to cold thermogenesis. Unfortunately, this is a, uh, an official, you know, medical place. They do blood work for jobs and for drug screenings. So there's confidentiality issues. So uh, we will not be filming that. You have to use your imagination. Then we'll hit the hotel, throw in a cool fat burner, come back and get the after results. See what happens. All right. Okay. So just got blood drawn for the uh, before reading. I'm about to. Uh, do my cold uh, thermogenesis session here with the uh, cool fat burner, cool gut buster. Just had a little snag though. I brought enough cold packs to last, uh, you know, longer if need be. And uh, it turns out the uh, front desk at the hotel here apparently didn't realize that you put cold packs in a freezer. They stored them in the refrigerator. So now I have uh, half my cold packs are not really cold. So we're going to see how this turns out and uh, let's just get to it. All right. Okay, so as you probably already know, we've uh, done experiments on cool fat burner to improve insulin glucose sensitivity, uh, to speed up and increase the acquiring of the ketosis, ketogenic state. There's the groundbreaking uh, study I did out at the University of California, San Diego, where I tripled my metabolism, calorie burning rate, doing indirect calorimetry. And now we are going to test and see if the cool fat burner can increase levels of the hormone adiponectin. Adiponectin was discovered around 1995. It's a, it's a hormone that's uh, secreted by fat tissue, actually, ironically enough. Even though it signals uh, fat burning, it's probably one of the more important factors in regards to weight loss, uh, disease prevention, especially diseases related to obesity, uh, the metabolic disorder, which affects something like one third of Americans right now. And the big question out there is how do you increase adiponectin? Of course, big pharma and the drug companies are spending millions trying to get it in pill form. But that's probably not going to happen. It's difficult to synthesize. You can't eat it. It'd be digested. So today we're going to see if the cool fat burner can increase adiponectin. Some of the benefits of adiponectin. And remember, a lot of these are synergistic and they have kind of overlap with one another and reinforce one another. So it's kind of hard to uh, differentiate and distinguish between them. Of course, there's the increased fat burning and weight loss. There's increased insulin sensitivity. There's the effects it has on muscle tissue, increased positive muscular enhancements. There's a reduction in systemic inflammation and all the diseases related to that, including heart disease. There's even a reduction or a fighting of uh, cancer, cancer tissue, different types of cancer, and cellular as well as whole body longevity. Okay, so let's look at some of these different benefits. First, we have a fat burning and weight loss. Adiponectin increases free fatty acid oxidation or burning uh, in muscle tissue, while at the same time it lowers blood glucose levels. And it's inversely related to obesity. So adiponectin basically pulls fat tissue out of your cell, fat cells, and pushes it into muscles to be burned. Uh, in animal models, adiponectin actually increases the metabolic rate, increases thermogenesis, without affecting hunger. So basically the animals, uh, their metabolic rate went up, but without eating anything. And of course that's closely related to insulin sensitivity. Uh, Basically, adiponectin increases glucose uptake into muscle tissue, into the muscle cells to be burned as fuel, uh, while reducing glucose production in the liver. So with the uh, increased fat burning, increased weight loss, insulin sensitivity, we see this is uh, already an avenue for preventing metabolic disorder, and, but it also leads directly to many of the muscular enhancements and improvements. As we said, uh, adiponectin induces glucose uptake into muscle cells. It does this by the GLUT4 receptors. This is ties in with nutrient partitioning and glycogen supercompensation, which I've mentioned before. Again, nutrient partitioning is whenever you increase, basically you selectively increase insulin sensitivity, meaning whenever you eat whatever you eat, particularly carbs and certain proteins, those nutrients 
broken down into more basic molecules floating through the bloodstream, nutrient partitioning pulls those nutrients into your muscles and not into your fat, which is obviously the ideal way you want to go. Uh, and then glycogen supercompensation. Glycogen is what your muscles burn, at least during high-intensity uh, exercise. Well, increased adiponectin, increased insulin sensitivity could theoretically increase your glycogen refueling of the muscles to the to super high levels called super compensation and this should theoretically help with protein synthesis basically make you bigger stronger and faster help with that uh, you may recall in the how I eat junk food and still lose weight video I talk about uh, having no carbs for the first part of the day then working out typically a power endurance workout uh, then hitting your carb refeed meal, junk food meal, whatever, all in one big meal, and then doing cold thermogenesis uh, with a cool fat burner within one or two hours after that. And basically, you're getting like a triple whammy there, maximum insulin sensitivity. You're pushing all this into your muscles, all, all this glucose and, and protein, and you feel really pumped afterwards after the CFB session. And basically, you have glycogen supercompensation. This is important because if you look in the... And health and diet circles, people that are into this stuff, they are, they're able to do this maybe one or two days a week. And that's by depriving themselves all week of carbs. They basically go real low carb, work out really hard, burn out all their glycogen all week. And then maybe for one or two days, they eat a bunch of junk food to fill their muscles back up and get some super compensation. Well, but using the method I use, I was able to do it three or four days a week, spread throughout the week. So, you know, that's obviously a lot more advantageous and desirable to go that route. Another huge benefit with adiponectin on muscles is that it increases mitochondrial biogenesis. Mitochondria are organelles within the cells of most cells of the human body. They're basically power plants. They burn fuel, produce energy. Well, adiponectin increases the number of mitochondria in muscles as well as their efficiency. It can increase their hardiness and or production of free radicals. So we'll get into that later. There's some anti-disease, anti-cancer aspects to that as well. So the application there, this also has application not just with the efficiency of your muscles, but potentially appearance and uh, athletic performance. I've had, not, not only with myself, but with uh, various customers, report back that they see in increased size increase or strength increase with cool fat burner use. If you look at a scale from explosive activity, which might be one or two reps of all-out effort and, or speed, then you, as you travel down the uh, continuum, you have more strength-based activities, maybe th three or four or five or six reps. Then you have hypertrophy workouts that make you bigger, make your muscles bigger. That might be like eight to ten reps. And then once you get into, uh, well, more endurance-based, but still using strength and explosion, if you have your power endurance workout, all the way down towards endurance-type training. Uh, in terms of your reps versus weight versus rest periods uh, continuum there. Well, this increased mitochondrial biogenesis that's induced by adiponectin, this would definitely should help endurance athletes. It should really help power endurance athletes as well, and it might even help hypertrophy athletes, i.e. guys who want to get bigger or women who want to get bigger muscles. So it should help uh, at least all that stuff. It may not help a whole lot with the strength and probably won't help with pure explosiveness, but it will help with the other aspects. So again, those three elements, the fat burning, the insulin sensitivity, the increased mus muscular uh, improvements or enhancements, all that stuff kind of ties together. And you already see a huge benefit there with adiponectin. Now some other benefits, and this is probably why the big drug companies are researching it, is the reduction of systemic inflammation, uh, the reduction of heart disease, reduction of metabolic disorders, and everything related to that. Adiponectin is inversely related. That means it's low when these other things are high. Adiponectin is inversely related to C-reactive protein, which is basically an inflammatory uh, marker in your body. Inversely related to low density uh, cholesterol, all the stuff associated with heart disease. Inversely related to hypertension, blood pressure. To endothelial dysfunction, basically the inside uh, lining of your blood vessels. Inversely related to heart disease. So when adiponectin's low, that stuff's all high. And then when your adiponectin goes is high, those things tend to drop. In fact, if they inject adiponectin, it actually increases vasodilation of the blood vessels. So there's kind of a treatment for uh, hypertension, high blood pressure, and it reduces cardiac tissue inflammation. It immediately causes these changes on the cellular level. Now let's look at uh, adiponectin's effect on uh, cancer and DNA repair. So more inverse correlations. Adiponectin is inversely related to endometrial cancer, postmenopausal uh, breast cancer, colon, gastric and prostate cancers, and leukemia. Now the mechanisms, they're not 
completely sure on all the mechanisms on all these benefits we're talking about, but they have uh, determined some of the mechanisms, for example, with cancer, adiponectin promotes positive physiological and hormonal changes, lower glucose and insulin, which should help uh, stagnate cancerous tissue, cancer cells. It can Im- increase DNA repair enzymes, uh, TNF-alpha, the tumor necrosis factor, direct mechanisms. Uh, there are actually receptors on many of these tissues, prostate tissue, breast cancer tissue. The receptors on the cells themselves, the cancer cells, that when adiponectin fills those uh, receptors, it actually inhibits the cell growth or even induces apoptosis. And that's as a quick aside, let's talk about what apoptosis is. Apoptosis is the destruction of cells, the killing of cells. In this case, the destruction of harmful junk cells, cancer cells or whatever. Well, it's also been discovered that when you apply direct cold to the skin, you can actually cause apoptosis in the fat directly under the skin. Now, how cold it has to be and for how long is still up for debate. And, it, and also, it only happens at a few millimeters at the time. You can't just wear the cool gut buster, then, you know, two hours later have a six pack. It's obviously not going to work that fast. But if you put on something like the cool gut buster, have, that, have our specialized cold packs compressed against your stomach, love handles all the way around. If apoptosis can work, that probably is going to induce it to work. It's you're going to have breakdown and reabsorption of those skin or those fat cells. So not only are you getting the indirect uh, fat burning methods through adiponectin, through brown fat, through highest level shivering, through the methods we've described on the website and everywhere else, you're now getting direct physical destruction of fat through apoptosis if that occurs. The final benefit of adiponectin is uh, they see it's directly uh, correlated. It's higher in centarians, people that are over 95 years old, especially in certain demographics. And it's independent of their body mass index, so it's not just because they happen to be lean. They're also living long. There's you know, some of them were overweight, but they still live long, and they had high adiponectin. Now, at least in some of those studies they looked at, uh, they actually had genetic differences that gave them high adiponectin, but you know, maybe if you can get high adiponectin, high adiponectin via um, cold thermogenesis, well then maybe, uh, you know, maybe it could increase longevity in that regard as well. So those are the benefits of adiponectin, and after an hour and a half of shiver surfing, hardcore intensity, and as you can see, my adiponectin levels jumped from 7.1 up to 11.5, and that's a 62% increase. That is huge. (laughs) That is a significant increase. This probably explains, again, all the benefits that come with cold thermogenesis that go far beyond just burning fat. We're talking horm- positive hormonal systemic embetterment <laughs> that, that, this, that just improves everything. You know, from burning fat to help building muscle, reducing systemic inflammation, reducing disease, possibly preventing or help fighting cancer, increasing longevity. Now you know why the drug companies are spending millions to try to get it in pill form, and, and they're not succeeding. But now you got a method. Cool fat burner. All right. Till next time. Brought to you by the Cool Fat Burner, the world's first brown fat weight loss device. 